One team from each league. We'll see the Florida Marlins as they play against the Chicago White Sox. Major League Baseball, only on 2K Sports. The White Sox call this one home, U.S. Cellular Field in Chicago. A look at Carlos Quentin, no doubt getting ready for some offensive punch. And hi again, we welcome you to our Saturday night broadcast of Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. Pepsi presents our starting lineup. We'll check out the Marlins. Now, John, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? When you make out your lineup as a manager every day, a lot of times you don't know what you're going to get. That's not the case here with Cody Ross. You know what you're going to get from this guy. Hitting off Cameron Mabel. Well, Marlins coming in off a loss and being the first of three against Chicago. Well, right now this team is just several games back of first place in their division. Line drive. And he's on. That's a nice way to jumpstart your now offense. For now, a quick Marlins. look for this game of the White Sox Fielders and how they are positioned in the field. Who do you like out there, Steve? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. Smash towards the middle. And it's through. That's a base hit. Now Here's what the White Sox schedule Marlins. looks like. Shortstop. Tomorrow, they finish up this Florida Henry series. Ramirez. They'll kick off a series with division rivals, the Cleveland Indians. That's a team they handled all right the last time up. They'll try for a repeat performance. That'll be a three-game series. Then they have to contend with Deanna Navarro and that lineup brought in by Tampa Bay, the team they rolled over last time out. So they'll be on the road quite a bit over this next stretch. Here's Hanley Ramirez with a couple on. Nope, that one not in there. PV missing. Here's the 1 0. -oh. And that's two. off the plate away. Ball two. He's ready. Now the 2 0. -oh. Smashes that one towards the shortstop. And that's going to be another hit for them. Maven scores. Well, you always feel really good when you can drive in a run for your team, but especially in the first inning, it sets the tone for the rest of the game. And Dan Ugla up. Getting out in front. Any time of the ball game, you want to do that. Now you try and build on it. Well, that's a good piece of hitting right there to take an early lead in this game. Had a big rip at that one and falls behind 0-1. It's very early, so it may not stand up, but uh, far better to be playing with the edge. Well, that's right, Gary. They're going to try to use that edge to add some padding to this lead. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. And it's hit foul by Ugla. Peavy winds up for the one two pitch. And Dan Ugla will strike out no contact on that field. Oh, Gary, that's an outstanding slider. That great late action with two strikes. Not much you can do with that one. Tough one to hit. RBI chance, Cody Ross. One for two lifetime against Peavy. Ball! Slider just misses one and oh. The 1-0 now. And he looks at a slider that's in there, 1-1. One one. Well, one area the Chicago White Sox are looking to see some improvement over 2009 is, is their team defense has got to get better. Damon. Runner on his way to third. Now the White Sox defensively, 113 errors, second worst in the American three. League. Jorge. You are not going to win baseball games when you're giving up all those extra chances now. Well, no, not in that division and not in any division, especially in the American League where the DH is, is so prevalent because the more at bats you let these good hitters get the top of the order, the middle of the order, you keep turning the lineup over by making errors, the more chance your pitchers are going to give up a lot of runs. And that's what happened to this Chicago White Sox team in 2009. Well, John, in addition to the defense, I mean, they were also last in hits in the American League and near the bottom in extra base hits as well. So, you know, they got multiple components of their team that just didn't perform well enough. Oh, Ramirez stealing. And there's Tian for the third out. Well, some early production here. One run across in the first. Florida's up one to nothing. And we'll get to see Chris Volstad pitching. He'll be starting this one off for Florida. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? 
uh, for Chris Volstad, you're going to see leverage is the name of the game. Six foot eight, 225 pounds. He likes to work downhill on the mound and pound the bottom of the strike zone. When he does that, he's effective. If he elevates his pitches, though, the hitters can turn him around. Line shot into center field. And that's in there. The White Sox get a man on. Presented by Pepsi, we'll show you the lineup Ozzie Guillen's got going. Scouting report, John. How about some picks? Well, it's so rare for a guy that has some power in his bat, like Alexi Ramirez has, but he doesn't strike out a lot. That shows he has great plate discipline, and he also, when he gets a chance, he puts the ball in play. So look for some excitement and some action every time he comes to bat today. Swing and a line drive. And that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with a single. Got a chance to check out the Marlins now. Here's how they look defensively. Number 14. And it's Paul Canerco now. He's the league leader in ribbies. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. With that strike, Volstad is now out in front, 0-2. A great changeup right there. You see how far out in front of it he is? And he gathers this one. Over to second for one. But he'll hang on to that, so they will get one. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average. First in batting average with runners in scoring position. And they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody. Up the middle. A said run should come in. It'll be a tie game. And he comes home. That's it. We are tied. Now batting for the Chicago Good pitch down low, Steve, but a better at bat. Well, he did a real nice job going down in the swing to get that low ball to be able to pick up the hit. And Beckham's in the box. What a great job by this lineup. They have really put the production on here. On, on that at bat, he evened it up with one swing. And you know, this game already shaping up, so it's going to be a seesaw battle. Hot shot towards the hole. The National League has some real tough teams, certainly. And let's take a look at where the Florida Marlins sit among those teams. Second batting average with runners in scoring position. Seventh in stolen bases, and they ranked in the top ten in ERA, pitching a major reason why this team wins games. Pitching and defense, the key, pitching particularly. And that gets down, and Pernarco to cross the plate. Well, now after giving up three straight hits, the manager has to start thinking about getting somebody up in the pen. Uh, you can sense the pressure right now in this young man, Chris Volstead, on the mound. He's got himself a little jam. Let's see if he can get on it. Some hot water right here, Steve. Base is loaded, only one away. Well, it's still early in the game, but everyone in the ballpark understands what an important at bat this is in this situation. It could impact the rest of the game. Pitch on the way. Swing and lined up the middle. And it's in there. Krasinski with a hit in the RBI. Well, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. I mean, now it's number four straight hits. He's got to start wondering what's going on. Maybe he's tipping his pitches or they're just figuring him out. Martin looking to knock in a run. And when you got the bases loaded like this, this is the opportunity you look for in a game. It may not come again. Well, when you have a lead, you want to keep adding to it. A big opportunity here to spread the margin. On the way. Swing and a miss, but he was right on it, 0-1. His batting average, a low 211 lifetime off Florida. And he grabs this one. One. And there's two, a double play. They get six hits in the inning, but wind up pushing across just three runs. The White Sox leading now. They've got the momentum. Bottom three, due up next. It's going to be Paulino now. Catcher, number 29, Ronnie Paulino. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect on one. Oh. 
Lines this one to the left side out of play. He makes contact, line drive. And Paulino's got himself a base hit. And tomorrow afternoon, mark this one down. It'll be Kevin Euclid and the Boston Red Sox. They'll be taking on the Phillies in Philadelphia. And that'll be a 12.30 p.m. Eastern start time. Barden at the plate. A shot up the middle. He snares it. There's one. And a double play. They got a vote. Number 80, Bryson Stairs. going to be stairs now two out spaces empty oh. PV misses he's out of the zone down low but if you're going to miss this is where you want to miss throw that breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone if the hitter swings and puts it in play it's a ground ball out and out. Pitcher makes a nice play at first base. That was a nice play. Saw the opportunity at first. Didn't waste any time getting over. That's the key. Beat the runner to the back. Good hustle off the mound. And no one left on base. It's going to be Nix now. Number five, Jason Nix. Swung on and ripped towards second. Makes its way through for a single. Coming to back. Well, well, anytime you get your first hitter up in the inning, big things can happen. It opens up a lot of holes in the defense, and it makes it a lot easier to hit for the guys behind you. Runner on first. Now the first pitch. There's a ball hit very high in the air, deep to left field. And out of here, a home run, two runs, one swing. Now a four-run ball game. They just doubled their lead on that one. When you throw your four-seam fastball, you better locate it. If you make a mistake, good hitters are going to make you pay for it. He's paying for it now. White Sox lead expanded here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Number 10. Nobody on base and nobody out. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Hit sharply towards the hole. Well, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Fourth in doubles, fourth in hits. Uh, he, you notice he's also ranked in the top five in batting average. A guy that puts it in play, finds holes, and finds a way to get himself on base. And that'll bring up Paul Canerco, well, leading the league in home runs. Runner on first base, nobody out. And he starts Canerco out. It's strike one, can't make contact on the fastball. Here's the pitch. He swings and nails a liner. And Cantu makes the catch. And he can't get back. He is tagged out on the way back to the bag. Carlos Quinton at the plate with two away. Leading the MLB in batting average. Here's the pitch. That's on that off-speed pitch, but can't connect 0-1. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's Getting the job done for this offense is somebody they've really come to rely upon. Swings, hits this one very high in the air. A soaring drive. Goodbye, home run. Like they're getting very comfortable. Coming 
White Sox lead expanding here. Gary, they just keep getting big hits. Number 15. Bases empty with two up. Here's the first pitch. Third ball swung on and missed. Now it's 0 1. Well, not a whole lot you can do when a pitcher's locating that curveball down in the strike zone. There's just not a lot for the hitter to get accomplished with that swing. Oh. You just hope to foul it off, and he makes a mistake with the next one. You're out. Bring him up. Strike three. But, boy, what a solid offensive inning that was. But they strike for three runs here thanks to two home runs in the inning. White Sox, they've got a commanding five-run lead. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Right now his lineup is in overdrive. An exciting bit of run production. A good way to keep your manager happy. Called strike. And PB's got him on one. Unless you stay back and really think about going the other way, you've got no chance of hitting that four-seamer down the way. And Cameron Mabin watches that one go by. Count is even. Ground ball towards the second baseman. Retiring Maven. The season's taking form as we look at the standings in the Eastern Division, courtesy of State Farm. First place, the Phillies. It's the Mets in second. At third spot, the Marlins. In fourth place, it's the Braves. And the bottom dwellers, the Washington Nationals. And it's Coglin batting. Well, the biggest adjustment you make from your rookie year to your second year is adjusting to what the pitchers are going to do. They're going to go home and they're going to watch tape all offseason on Chris Coggin to figure out how to get him out. How does he react when he struggles a little bit? Can he make the adjustment on the pitchers? At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. That one's lined softly towards the gap left center. And that one and is the in there, his second the hit today. Tomorrow. So that brings up Hanley Ramirez. Hanley Certainly Ramirez. for Chris Coughlin, he is well aware of the sophomore slump. There's a reason for that. It's about being able to play up to expectations, and can he do that in 2010? Why, well, I really think he can. I just love Drill towards the hole, and that's a base hit. Ramirez on board with a single. The Boy, what an opportunity here for Florida. Second Just kind of lean in, Steve, and slap that thing the other way on that kind of pitch. Well, you can't pull that pitch. If you do, it's going to be a ground ball to short. You want to punch it to right field. He's one of the best at doing it. And here's Dan Ugly. He's off in a walk, top five in the league. And Peavy misses. He's out of the zone Whoa. down low. You know, the walk is such a critical aspect of the game. You know, on base percentage is so underrated. Getting a guy on base with a walk means the pitcher had to throw a lot of pitches. He had to work to try to get him out, and it tires him out for the rest of the game and in that inning. And here's the pitch. And that misses. Ball four. He has loaded him up. Right fielder, number 12, Cody Ross. RBI chance, Cody Ross. Well, he's got an opportunity here. He can be a hero. You get an extra base hit, you're going to score some runs. Well, you don't know how many opportunities you're going to get later in the game. You have to take advantage of this one. If you're going to make a comeback, now is the time to start. First pitch was a strike, 0-1 oh, now. But well, what more can you say about oh. the season Cody Ross had in 2009 for the Florida Marlins? 24 home runs, 90 RBIs, and a guy that finally got a chance to put together a full season. He Swung on, hit by Ross. And that one goes through. Ross knocking in the run. And Ramirez scores two. At the plate. And so Florida happy to keep this momentum on their side. Certainly the run made by the Marlins, and many thought they wouldn't be able to make a run last year, in large part due to Cody Ross and the offense that he provided. Now he's got to do it again. Well, he sure did. He had a bunch of clutch hits, too, some walk-off homers, some walk-off hits. And I tell you what, that's what this team needs because they're not going to be ever be a very deep team because they get rid of so many guys once they become free agents. So the guys who are there have to produce the guys that play every day. Cody Ross surely did that in 2000. Head up the middle, and that will keep the runners. They have to stay at first and second. Good baseball and a good job. Let's take a look. Uh, you know, we talk about team in baseball, and that's where you see it a lot of times on defense. It's going to be Paulino now. And here's the first one. That's a strike. PB gets it by him. Good hard slider swung on and missed. 0 and 2.
On the ground to first. Played by Canerco. Yeah, yeah. And he'll step on first to retire the side. So they scratch across two runs, three hits and two left on. The Marlins, they're moving in this one now. They've cut into the lead. Wonderful Chicago evening for baseball. Temperature did not drop a bit with that sun going down. Still pretty cool. And Alex Cerrillos to lead off. Uh, you tuned into the game last night. You saw his home run. That's getting the job done. You're in scoring position when you're at home plate. And he starts Rios out. First pitch, and he misses the fastball. Strike one. Oh, he just swung late on that one. That's what you call getting gassed up. That's a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Here's the delivery. That's hit foul by Rios. Hit up the middle. And that's going to be a base hit for Rios. He's going to try to stretch it. That's going to bring up A.J. Krasinski. And coming up for the Marlins. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. And they'll be going up against Nate McLeod from the Braves. That's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then they get to face their NL East brethren, the Philadelphia Phillies. So a lot of home games on the way. The fans will have a chance to see their guys many times over in the next couple of weeks. And he's in the top echelon of hits right now. First pitch, here it comes. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality Mark approach at the plate. Day in and day out, that consistency is critical to their success. And here's Martian. And one of the top ten averages right now. He swings down, really hit that. And Maven. That Rios towards third base. Our State Farm leaderboard, the team's getting it done with runners in scoring position. The White Sox, number one. Blue Jays in second. Third, the Yankees. Fourth, the Red Sox. And we've got the Twins, who are number five. Well, the thing as a manager and a hitting coach you look for is can your guys hit in the clutch? Well, this team right here in this season has been the number one team with hitting with runners in scoring position. That's why they score so many runs, and that's why they're one of the more dominant teams that you'll face. He makes contact, line drive, and he gets it down. He's two for two now. That will bring up Johnny Damon. They tried to go down with that 0-1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steven, looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate and took advantage of it. Here's the delivery. Swung on and missed, 0-1. He's hitting 333 lifetime off the Marlins. Here's the pitch. Strike two. No balls, two strikes. Veteran Damon, though. He'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. The hitter needs a two-strike approach. Shorten up the swing. Think about going the other way. Number ten. Able to set him down there. Chalk that one up as a strikeout for him. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Dive by Adla. He's up with it. And it's in time from his knees to get the out. Well, they load the bases on the strength of three base hits, but no runs. And it'll be the Marlin. Barton is the batter now. He'll dig in, start of the fourth inning. The first pitch. Swing and a miss on the cutter. 0 and 1. Well, his timing is just off right now. He swung way late on that cutter. On the ground to second. Back up. In time for the up. The Central Division race is starting to take shape. Let's take a look at the State Farm standings board. It's the White Sox in first. In second place, it's the Royals. Twins in the third spot. Tigers in fourth place. And down at the bottom, the Cleveland Indians. Not a lot of expectations in Chicago this year, but the White Sox surprising everybody. Sitting atop of the American League Central right now and, and building that confidence level.
Swung on and a ground at a first. And he steps on first. That's the second out. It's Maven at the plate. Nothing in two ABs against the White Sox. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. And there's a swing and a miss behind 0 1. Maven makes contact. That is fouled off. Swung on, line softly towards right center. And in there, he's two for three now today. To and for that'll bring Chris Coglin up. Left fielder. Well, this eight. guy's always a threat to go. He steals a lot of bases, so they're going to have to keep a close eye on him. And maybe they'll make a mistake to the hitter, paying attention to the run. There he goes towards second. He is safe at second base. This is inside, and that now, hit him hard. For the floor of the well, they set up Short inside, time. but he threw it a little too far Henry inside. Ramirez. Take your base. So that will put Hanley Ramirez at the plate. Two men on and two men out. And Przinski calls for the pitch. Hit on the ground towards second. Throw in time. Forces him at second for the third out. And Jake Peavy, he's heading in. We'll go now to the bottom of the fourth. There's Freddy Gonzalez on the screen. His club trailing by three. Some important thoughts going through his mind about getting this game back. And Paul Canerco to bat. He's gone five for 14 lifetime against the Marlins. And he starts Canerco out. He swings on that 0-0 delivery. Misses the fastball. Strike one. Now, if you tuned into the ball game last night, you saw the fact that he hit a two-run home run in that game. Up the middle, picked up by Ugla. And Canerco retires. Right fielder, number 20. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He went deep in his last time up. One out, faces him. Here's the pitch. Swung on, liner to right. Though Quinton is retired. Now it's two away. And Beckham's in the box. Struck out swinging his last time up. And the first pitch. Fastball, swung out and missed, 0 and 1. Credit the catcher on that one. That's a good low target setting up, and he hit the target. Good execution. Strike two, Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Swing and a line at a right center. And the side's retired. Ross catches it and he'll head in. And a good defensive half inning, three up, three down. We're through four in Chicago. And it's Dan Ugla to lead it off. And a lot of free passes, National League top five department. First pitch to Ugla. And swing and a miss on Peavy's pitch. 0 oh, 1. Pitch on the way. Good eye by Dan Ugla. He lays off that one to even the count. 11 career ABs, two hits off Jake Peavy. Good spot that time. Hit that outside corner. 1 and 2. Good eye by Dan Ugla. He lays off that one to even the count. Unable to get that bat off his shoulder. Dan Ugla is a strikeout. To get a better look, K Cam's going to show us the curve. A nice choice on the setup and then the strikeout pitch. That was just plain dirty. Boy, you give him the off speed stuff to finish the job, you make a hitter feel bad. Well, movement like that, following another off speed pitch, is so tough to adjust to. The batter had no clue which way the ball was going to break. And Ross settles in for the first pitch. Not a pretty pitch, no damage. And Peavy with a 1-0 delivery. 
Swung on, hit in the air to right center. That one falls in there for a base hit. So Jorge Cantu will come up. Here are some teams that have uh, really been seeing the ball well. The highest batting averages for the last 10 games, courtesy of State Farm. Number one, the Phillies. Second, the Mets. Marlins third. Fourth, the Brewers. And fifth best, it's the Dodgers. Uh, the real deep lineups right here. You see these offenses, the ability to put the ball in play, pick up the base hits, and continue to force the defense to try to make plays. Well, Jorge Cantu had an outstanding season in 2009 with the Florida Marlins, driving in 100 runs for the first time in his career, and only struck out 81 times. Here's a guy that's going to put the ball in play, and he can hit for some power. A great guy to have in the middle of your lineup. Good cut fastball in there, one and one. Jorge Cantu uh, not only gives you the offensive numbers, but as we see more and more in Major League Baseball, a player who can be moved around in the infield and not suffer at the plate. Yeah, and that's that's the amazing thing about these guys. A lot of guys, they suffer when they move position from position. Jorge Cantu seems to get better. He can play any corner position. He can also play some second base if necessary. That's what makes him so valuable to the team he's with. Gets one at second. And he's going to hang on to it. No relay. So they will not get the double play. They get the lead runner at second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. First pitch on the way. Called strike. And PB's got him on one. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement, down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. Good movement to that cutter. And he's in the hole now, 0 and 2. He delivers. And that swung on and hit Rios. And it is in there. That's going to bring the tying run to the plate. Good offensive chance here. Nice two strike approach by the hitter. A high pitch up in the zone. Able to fight it off and make contact and put it in play. Here's the first pitch. Cutter just misses. 1 and 0. Strike one, PV evens the count. Well, if he can throw this cutter down and away like this, he's going to be very effective. That's an outstanding pitch. The one and one. It's fouled off. The one, two on its way. And that's another foul ball. Well, even though he got ahead in the count here, one and two very quickly, you know he's in for a battle because this guy will shorten up just to put it in play. The pitcher has to be at the top of his game even when he's ahead in the count to get this guy out. And he fouls off another one. Slider swung on and missed. Struck him out. That's going to retire the side. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. The White Sox still ahead. A look at the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Uh, he has to be happy with the work on the mound, especially that last inning. Insurance run so important. And Alex Cerrillos to lead off. And right now, top five in runs batted in in the lead. The pitch pulls that one off, and it's high, ball one. Well, pitchers like to throw in off the plate. If it's not a strike, then you want to send the message to the hitter to back up. It allows you to open up the outer third of the plate now. Here's the 1-1. Swing and a liner to left. And in there, three for three ball game. That's going to bring up A.J. Krasinski. We talk about a guy who's swinging it right now as good as anybody. That's his third hit of the ball game thus far. Let's see if this can mount a rally with nobody out. One of the best batting averages in the league. And the first pitch. Swings and misses at the fastball. 0-1. The pitch. And that's a strike. A.J. Pruszynski now behind in the count. Defensive stance at the plate. Well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter. Swung late. Down on strikes there. A nice piece of pitching. You know, what I like about this is on 0-2, he didn't mess around. He didn't try to nibble to get him chase off the plate. He goes right at him and just gets the strikeout. And Mark Tian up in the top ten and hits. That's about as easy as it gets. He could have caught that one in his back pocket. It's going to be Nix now. 
Jason Nix. Two outs and a man on first. And here's the first one. Hit sharply towards the hole. That one right through the defense. A base hit. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. It's his third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. And it's Johnny Damon at the plate. Two for three thus far. Well, the team winning, he's been a big part of the offense. Driving in a run with a base hit and then the home run where he got a pitch that he could drive out of the ballpark and capitalize on it. First pitch on the way to Damon. There's a swing and a line drive. And that slide, the throw is there though. He is out at second. They pick up no runs on two hits and strand one. It's going to be stairs now. He's ready to start out here in the sixth inning. And the first pitch. On the ground to second. One away. Brought to you by State Farm, our league leaderboard. The team's doing the best job of keeping runs off the board. Number one, the White Sox. The Mariners in second. The Twins third. Fourth, the Red Sox. And fifth best, the A's. Well, this whole staff seems to be in shutdown mode. And it doesn't matter if it's the starter, the reliever, or the closers. These guys are all getting the job done. It makes it so much. Runs up to Bunt, gets this one down. Peavy. And he makes it to first in time. And that'll bring Chris Coglin up. Well, defense tries to get it out here, but they come up empty. Now you get a guy safe at first base. At the belt, Peavy kicks and throws. Cut fastball in there for a called strike. When you can hit your spot with that kind of movement, down and into the hitter, you're way ahead of the game. And Chris Coglin looks at that one for a ball to even it up. Here's a swing and a ground ball. He picks it up. That's one. Decides not to try for the double play. Hangs on to it. Well, they get the lead runner in second base, but I think they would have liked to have gotten two right there. So, Hanley Ramirez will try and keep it going. Drove in a run earlier in the game. First pitch. Swung on. Hit. Peavy. Throws to first side as retired. So Jake Peavy holding it down. And it'll be the White Sox. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. And uh, at the plate, one of the tops and runs scored. Top five. First pitch on the way. Line towards first. And in there for a base hit. He's three for four today. Oh, Alexi Ramirez's season so far. Let's take a look at where he ranks compared to everybody else. Fourth in double, fourth in hits. Uh, he, you'll notice he's also ranked in the top five in batting average. A guy that puts it in play, finds holes, and finds a way to get himself on. Swung on, line to right field. The throw, not in time. He's on at second. Up next, Carlos Quinton. Right field. A couple of RBIs Number thus far. And he's swinging the bat very well today and doing a little bit of everything. Driving in runs, hitting the ball out of the ballpark, having a good ball game. No one out yet. Runners at first and second. First pitch to Quinton. There's a swing. Line drive, center field. And he's on now. That's going to be another hit for them. And Ramirez is home. Now Situations the repeating the themselves here. A chance to produce, and they are. But just what his team needed. He continues to swing a great bat. Three hits from now in this ball game, and he's on with no outs. And Beckham's in the box. So the direction here. That one's drilled to short. That's one out. And two. A double play. And Canarco will score. Well, here's a double play that looks like they ordered up. Great turn throw at second base. He was ready to make the play. An example of a nicely executed double play. So Alex Rios, he'll try and keep it going. And for RBIs, he's one of the best in the league. Here's the pitch. Back up the middle. And yet another hit there, seeing the ball well. That's going to bring up A.J. Brzezinski. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. 
Top five AL in runs scored. Here's the pitch. That swung on line towards the gap in left center. And he'll take an extra base on this one. It's rolling towards the wall. And is Rios heading home. And he will score. Great base run. He's having himself a day right here in this one. Two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. And Mark T into bat. And they've not had to struggle here at the plate in this game. They just keep building on this lead. Gary, that last hit just blows the door wide. Swing liner back up the middle. And there's another one. They really are stringing these hits out. Uh, now he's surrendered three straight hits. He's got to bounce back and get this guy. He needs out. It's going to be Knicks now. Third year player. First pitch to him. A smash between short and third. They give six hits in the inning, but wind up pushing across just three runs. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Looking on, Freddie Gonzalez. And uh, tough decisions, maybe or maybe not. This bench needs some inspiration. He'll try to give it to him. First pitch to Ugla. Swings at that fastball and misses. 0-1. Oh Look, Gary, with this big a lead here in the seventh inning, it's incumbent upon the pitcher to throw strikes. Get outs right now. There's a smash towards the hole. And Canerco makes the catch. And in the batter's box, it's Ross. He had a single in his last time up. Well, he's already driven in a couple runs in this one, Gary. you got to believe they're going to pitch him a little bit more carefully this time around. And that's the ball. BB too far outside with it. Look, Gary, one out here in the seventh inning. I mean, you have to like the way this is going. They're looking good. The pitcher's throwing strikes. The defense making plays. They've got a big lead. Everything feels good. One one on the way. Can't connect there. Ball and two strikes. Here's the delivery. And it remains one and two. Another foul ball as Ross works hard. But what you're looking for when you're behind an account is you hope the pitcher makes a mistake. In this case, though, he didn't. He made a great pitch down in the strike zone. But give the hitter credit. It gets up on that bat a little bit, choking up, and keeps it in play to keep the at bat alive. We well, tried to get a piece of that one and at least follow it off, but that ball up and in, he couldn't quite catch up to it. Strike three. Two outs, bases empty. A fresh count on Cantu. Here it comes. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And Cantu's got himself a base hit. Now the lineups who are the hardest outs. Highest on base percentage the last 10 games. It's brought to you by State Farm. The Phillies, number one. Second, the Brewers. In third, the Mets. Fourth, the Marlins. And fifth best, it's the Dodgers. And that's the ball. PB too far outside with it. Well, it's getting late right now. Two outs here in the seventh inning. And Hit in the air to left center. Rios will field. And that's out number three. Solid outing moves on here. Jake Peavy. He's looking to preserve that good lead and get... And welcome to those of you just tuning in. 2K Sports, Major League Baseball. This is Gary Thorne along with Steve Phillips and John Crook. You know, they're losing a little bit in the defensive department with this change. It may be geared more toward offense. It's just odd to make this move right now. Hot shot towards the hole. And so Damon retired. For the Chicago White Sox. Shortstop. And it's Alexei Ramirez now. One away. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Swung on and missed. Strike one. Well, you're running out of time in this one. You need to give your offense some chance to try to come back in this game. They've got a lot of room to make up. If they're standing out in the field, it's not going to help. He deals. 
This one's grounded hard up the middle. That's the second out. For the Chicago White Sox. First base. Donerko at the plate. He's had one hit four times up. Base is empty and two down. Swing shoots this one towards the gap, right center. This one rolls through to the wall. And he pulls into second base. That will be a double. Well, with two outs and you get a big double right here, the last thing you want to do is get stranded. You got a little momentum. You got the pitcher on the ropes. Let's see if they can take advantage. On the way. Swing and a rocket towards short. Throws to first in time. That's three down. In, out of the inning. Six pitches and it's over. White Sox nine. Florida three. None other than Ozzie. That's Ozzie Guillen. He has to be pleased with his team's performance so far today. Barden up now. He's going to lead off here as we go to the eighth. And here's the first one. That one goes foul. And we'll get to see Matt Thornton pitching as the White Sox bring him in as a reliever. I'll tell you what, this is one of those decisions you can go either way. He's pitched pretty well to this point. Ground ball towards second. Back up. One down. Going to be stairs now. Grounded out his last time through. One out, nobody on. The first pitch hit hard on the ground towards third. Two away. It's Maven at the plate. Two outs and nobody on. The pitch. Fastball just misses. 1-0. Oh. Uh, Gary, I think right now that uh, you've got to consider trading outs for runs if, if you're pitching. I mean, listen, uh, just keep getting outs right now. You have the countdown's there. You only need four outs left to win this ballgame. Strike one and two. Well, he couldn't have asked for a better pitch. He likes the ball down the middle like every hitter, and he got a fastball. You got Swung on. That is hit. Oh, avoided the path of that ball. That was right up the middle. Was that ever close? And that'll bring Chris Coglin up. He talked about a guy who's just wearing out the opposition. That's a four-hit day for him. He is locked in. And the first pitch. And he takes a called strike. The pitcher showing that he can effectively throw strikes on the inside part of the plate. Oh. The hitter now has to make an adjustment, possibly opening up for that pitch next time. Oh. Swung on and fouled away. Foul ball. And another foul ball. Well, even though he's still behind in the count, it's got to give himself a lot of confidence. There is a swing and a liner. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. And Beckham's in the box. He's had one hit four times up. Well, they say pitching and defense helps you win games. Well, that's some outstanding defense all day long from him today. Here's the first pitch. Swing sits this one pretty well. Deep right center. And this rolls all the way to the wall. Stops at second. Two baggers. Now State Farm brings you the lead leaderboard. The team's getting the most extra base hits. The White Sox number one. The Blue Jays in second. Third spot, the Red Sox. The Orioles fourth. And fifth best, the A's. A lot of people. Line shot into center field. One away. Now the runner will have to hold at second. It's going to be Przinski and an RBI double this last time. There's two RBIs here, Gary, and obviously a big part of this team's offense today. That's why they're winning. One on, one out. First pitch, here it comes. Hit sharply towards the hole.
Well, he just continues to swing a hot bat in this one. Is that four hits for him now? Yes, it is. There's a swing, line drive, center field. That's down, runner could come home. Well, he had three big hits in the last game, and that was on the winning side. And he's getting them going again with that at bat. And it'll be Burke Badenhop doing the pitching. As the Marlins bring in their reliever, it's going to be Nix now. Well, we've seen this club's offense, and I think we're going to see some more. They're running away with it, Steve. Gary, I mean, with that hit right there, I mean, they're just pouring gasoline on the fire right now. Somebody's got to have a hose. Now back with the Chicago White Sox. Two on and a couple down. Here's Johnny Damon. Two hits, five trips to the plate for him. Quality, productive at bats, driving in a run, and then the big home run as well. So their team's winning, and he's been a big part of the production. First pitch on the way to Damon. Hit hard on the ground to short. And yet another hit there, seeing the ball well. Well, a big two out hit right there. That's his third hit of the game so far. This man's doing what he has to do to help his team win. Bases are loaded with two down. Has him out in front as he swings and misses strike one. And he's out in front on that pitch, so he's in the hole now, 0-2. The hitter has to be protective. He has to be able to fight off that tough pitch and put it in play for a base hit if he can. Line drive. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. They pick up four hits in the inning, but manage only one run. White side. The skipper, Freddy Gonzalez. He's reflecting right now. Not uh, likely a lot of positive reflections, however, in this game. And we'll get to see Bobby Jenks pitching. He's been chosen to take over out there. So Steve, conscious of this Florida lineup, what's on his mind? Well, you take a look at this big body guy and Bobby Jenks out on the mound right oh. here, and you know it's about power because of his size. But it's his off-speed pitches, the secondary pitches, the slider, the changeup, the curveball that make him overall effective. Jenks with a delivery. Strike, and it's two and one. Well, I think right now, offensively, you've got to start getting base runners, get as many. Shot towards the hole. There's the throw. Not in time. Easily safe at first. So that brings Dan Ugla to the plate. We talk about a guy who's swinging a pretty hot bat right now. His third hit of this ball game, and it comes with nobody out in the inning. The 0-0 delivery, a fastball taken for a strike. Batting three for 13 lifetime off the White Sox. Good eye by Dan Ugla. He lays off that one to even the count. Here it comes. Hot shot towards the hole. Fantastic chance here. Well, that's hit number 15 in them for that one. And boy, you get 15 hits in a game. The manager can just sit back and relax and watch his team work. Runners at first and second. Nobody out. First pitch on the way. And that swung on and hit. Rios. That's one away. Well, as if, uh, you know, winning big right now, you just want to go out there, make plays, throw strikes, force them to try to put multiple hits together to get back into this game. Runners on first and second with one out. Sliders in there for a called strike. Down, down, down. It's all about location. That breaking ball down in the zone makes it very difficult on the hitter. And it's going to be Quentin as he ranges in and comes up with it. Now uh, down to their final out right here, Gary. So, I mean, they're looking pretty dire at this point. And, you know, but the listen, funnier things have happened. They've got to get base runners, though. That's a foul ball. Bobby Jenks, the strike two pitch, and Jenks now in charge. And it's in there. Strike three call. That's it. White Sox win this in a lopsided victory. A dominating performance, Gary. 
I think you'll agree with me. We've got a perfect choice for the Pepsi Clutch performer. A terrific mound game. The work of Jake Peavy. Well, you know, he had everything working today, and the biggest thing a pitcher can do is keep hitters off balance. Off-speed pitches with a fastball mixed in. He was he had everything working in this game today, and that's why they got him for performances like this. And, Gary, that's why we named him our Pepsi Clutch Performer of the Game. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Well, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans... They like the offensive explosion and the big win. And we hope you've enjoyed today's 2K sports broadcast of Major League Baseball. For Steve John and our entire 2K sports crew, I'm Gary Thorne. We will see you soon.